With great plainness of speech, the prophet Micah wrote, He hath showed thee, O man, what is good, and what doth the Lord require of thee, but to do justly, to love mercy, and to walk humbly with thy God. How are we doing with that? The Bible is instruction for life, and it applies to the situations we humans face every day. These short commentaries by Al illustrate the practical nature of the Word of God. Here's Al Parr with another short commentary. In Deuteronomy chapter 10, Moses wrote in verses 12 and 13, And now, Israel, what doth the Lord thy God require of thee but to fear the Lord thy God, to walk in all his ways, and to love him, and to serve the Lord thy God with all thy heart, with all thy soul, to keep the commandments of the Lord and his statutes, which I command thee this day, for thy good. And yet... There remain people everywhere, every day, asking, which commandments? There are those who would say, well, but, but that's what Moses wrote to Israel. We, we don't, we're not Israel. We don't live under Moses' law. There are those who would say, that's Old Testament. We live under the New Testament, and that doesn't apply to us. But from the beginning of history, there have been those people who would try to rationalize the law of God for their own purposes. Even the clear and very direct words of God. Going back to the Garden of Eden, you know, God said, it's recorded in Genesis chapter 2 and verse 17, Of the tree of the knowledge of good and evil, thou shalt not eat of it, for in the day that thou eatest thereof, thou shalt surely die. And you know that chapter 3 tells us, in verse number 6, that when the woman saw that the tree was good for food, and that it was pleasant to the eyes, and a tree to be desired to make one wise, she took of the fruit thereof and did eat, and also gave to her husband with her, and he did eat. You see, but it, it tastes good, and it looks good, and it, it'll make me wise. That cancels out the command of God? But that's what she said, that's what they did, and that's what people still do today. Through uh, all of history, the authority of God, God's written word, God's spoken word when he spoke directly to people, has never changed. In Psalm 119, verse 144 says, The righteousness of thy testimonies is everlasting. And in the 152nd verse of the same psalm, we read, Concerning thy testimonies, I have known of old that thou hast founded them forever. We know that the Bible that we read today is the same Bible that our parents, our grandparents, our great-grandparents read, the same Bible that was carried by the founders of America as they crossed the Atlantic Ocean, the same Bible that was read in the Middle Ages or that the uh, organized church tried to prevent people from reading. It's the same Bible that has existed since the time it was written, the last word, about 2,000 years ago. It hasn't changed, and it's still God's authority as it always was, always has been, and always will be. The everlasting gospel, as the term is used in Revelation 14 and verse number 6, will confront us when our earthly time is finished. In Revelation chapter 20 and verse 12, John saw the dead, the small and the great, stand before God, and the books were opened. And another book was opened, which is the book of life, and the dead were judged out of those things which were written in the book according to their works. Those who would excuse themselves from obedience cannot show a single word in the entire Bible in which God approved of people who just ignored his word and trusted in their own judgment instead. It simply doesn't happen. God will never say, I, I know what I said, but you don't have to believe it. You don't have to do it. It's okay. I'll, we'll get it. We'll, we'll, we'll make it all right. God doesn't do that. When we obey his word, when we respect him for what we see in his creation and in his word, then we know that he will bless us. 
Please commit some time today to read your Bible. See for yourself how practical it is. And contact the Church of Christ in your community. Or to find the nearest local church, visit www.churchofchrist.org. There are dashes between those words, Church of Christ. These short commentaries by Al are presented by Confirming the Churches. Find us on the web at www.acts1541.org.